Aloha my kako, a coma mighty curtain call from a distance, a program of reviews, previews, interviews, and features of and or with the great art and artist on Maui and beyond. I'm Paul James Brown, and I'm coming to you from my home office, where I have been conscientiously practicing self-isolation. The Hui Noiao Annual Juried Exhibition opened last week, and the show will be open to the public Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays until February 18th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. The jurors for this year's show were the master and his student, Dick Nelson and Carrie McCarthy, and they have mounted one of the strongest, most selective member shows in some time. From the 287 entries, only 85 works were selected from 62 artists. Only Ms. McCarthy made a juror's choice. She selected this oil on panel by Carla Gangini. Vine number one is an impressionistic image of a presumably dead vine because there is not a hint of green anywhere to be found. But, despite this seeming lack of life, the work almost dances on the wall. It is an exciting juxtaposition. Asked about his juror's choice, the always deeply thoughtful Mr. Nelson replied, quote, I made no juror's choice, as I believe that it tells little about the work and more about the juror, unquote. There is so much good work in this exhibition, this review will be a real challenge to discuss all the works I was impressed by. One of the things I love about reviewing visual artists whose work has been honed over years of study and practice until you don't need to look at the signature, you know the artist from their style, is when an artist moves in an entirely new direction. Deb Lynch, who is well known for her seascapes, she captures the power and translucency of waves better than anyone I know, has been using her time in self-isolation to take up a new media, and caustic. Her new works, If Only and Storm, are fine examples of this ancient medium. In fact, I liked If Only so much, I decided to make it a part of my collection. Another unusual piece, actually three pieces, were submitted by a new artist to me, Joyce Jeffers. Her work, which blends culture and art in a most beautiful way, with dyed featherwork and basketry in twine, cotton, and linen. Then there is Heidi Comstock's Silk, A Sense of Place. Ms. Comstock, another new artist to me, presents this work in five chapters, each represented by the plants characteristic of the regions they were, to quote the artist, quote, honorably harvested from, unquote. The top one is the Koi Pond in the Iao Valley vicinity. On the left is Wahe'e Coastal Dunes and Wetlands Refuge. In the center is Waiho Springs Forest Reserve. And finally, the right is Thompson Road in Kula. Becky Lewis's whimsical Ahihi Goat appears like it would be more at home in the upcoming virtual art of trash. Ms. Lewis has gathered a panoplic menagerie of detritus to create this exceptionally inventive sculpture. Darrell Orwig retired as the first director of the Schaefer International Gallery more than a decade ago due to illness, but this has not stopped him from continuing to paint, and in fact, his work since he retired has arguably been the best he has ever done. His well-known photorealism has given way to fine impressionism. This very large oil mountainscape and a road runs through it is a fine example of his continued artistic growth despite being in the grips of a debilitating illness. Becky Lewis did this marvelous oil pastel tribute to Mr. Orwig that I am certain would have been in the Schaefer Portrait Challenge, but it won't happen, hopefully, until 2022. Betty Canberra, whose Harley Davidson sculptures have given way to these fanciful necklaces she has been doing for several years now, this one that shows the tools of the artist is called the Traveling Artist Self Portrait. It is described as sterling silver, leather, and mixed media. My friend who accompanied me to the show, studied at New York's Fashion Institute of Technology, was most taken with this necklace. Christine Turnbull of the Turnbull Sculpture family has two notable works in the show. The ceramic called Daydreamer is a haunting work which grabs you and demands you examine it. What is this bedraggled creature daydreaming about? Her second ceramic and nature sculpture is My Hero. The figure, which appears to be pregnant, sits demurely on a black box with branches emanating from her headdress. Her oversized heart belies the mystery of the mask over her eyes. Among our top ceramicists, Marianne Lee presented this wonderfully titled Balancing Act. Next to it is the top of the sculpture. You could not help feeling slightly dizzy taking it in. More beautiful textile work from Sandra Clark. I cannot recall another show 
with such a wide variety of media. This one called Remembering FLW Oak Park is hand-dyed silk fiber. The juror Dick Nelson, who studied with the renowned 20th century colorist Joseph Albers at Yale, has developed a tri-hue watercolor system where any color can be created by the judicious blending of cyan, magenta, and yellow. He has trained thousands of artists in this technique. Here are three prominent examples of his influence. Pat Narraway's tiny triptych, Playful Paths, recognizes this school of art as part of its medium. And Sherry McNurthy's Airborne and Malka Showers show the remarkable qualities possible through the use of this technique. An artist who appears to have no media limitations is Judy Biscard. Here is her monoprint Landscape 3, and then she has this terrific oil painting of the iconic Keo Keo landmark, Ching's Store, the last gas station before Hana. Nida Bangerter is an accomplished painter, in addition to being the director of the Schaefer International Gallery at the Maui Arts and Cultural Center. She is as well known for her minor birds as is Janet Davis for her angels. However, in Shell Study 2, there's not a minor bird to be seen. The shells appear to float because of the shadows Ms. Bangerter has depicted. Julie Hauck, who splits her time between France, Maine, and Maui, has been facing some very serious health challenges that have caused her to move away from her well-known big sky dominated landscapes, which almost always have water in them, and has given the viewer two very different pieces. Her Enigma series number two, an intaglio viscosity monotype, is representative of her recent deep dive into the sea of abstraction, and this oil on linen on panel, Night Moves, is a more familiar and recognizable Julie Hauck image. However, the time of the image being presumably after sunset, it has a foreboding kind of stormy quality to it. This etching by Jim Pollan, entitled Lost in the Jungle, literally glitters with 23 karat gold leaf and appears at first to be an abstract work. Then, if one looks closely, suddenly emerges the eyes of a tiger or perhaps a female lion menacingly stalking the viewer. One can feel the deadly person eater padding on velvet feet silently stepping prior to taking the fatal leap. Just great. Jay Wilson is one of the leading exponents of computer art. He has successfully been able to take this most utilitarian device and effectively and artistically turned it into a palette of paints and a series of brushes or a carton of pastels. Here is his impression of a whale watch which has a distinct pastel-like texture. Jewelry always has a prominent place in any Hui jury exhibit. Roberta Weisenberg has contributed this stunning necklace, Flash of Fire, a shungite, argentium, and opal masterpiece that would be the delight of anyone lucky enough to possess it. Once again, there are more notable works than I have time to discuss in this brief review. So here are works I wish I had more time for. Valadia D'Alessio's Untitled Acrylic. Zenobia Lakdawalla's Untitled Ceramic. Christine Wara's Pastel the Juggler. And her oil, What Brings Us Together. David Vitarelli's Ceramic and Wood Toast 2020, G. Chapone's Queen's Jewels, Donna Zarbin Burns' Wall of Flower, Elaine Wender's Miscarriage Cradle, Elizabeth Keller's Watercolor 2A, Michael Takimoto's Sumie Etching, Honey Bun Haynes' Elegant Topical Screen on Monoprint Cover 20, and both of Nancy Scrimstad's Mixed Media Pieces, Kozalig, and they both have colored noses, among many others. This show is open to the public Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. until February 18th. Masks are required and social distancing as well as limited guests are mandated. Also, you can see a virtual exhibition at the Hui's website, www.huinoyao.com. The exhibition is generously supported by Carolyn Schaefer, and Scott, Mary, Catherine, Shelby, Simon, Brown, Dr. Brian A. Luther, and Dr. Susan M. O'Shaughnessy, Doug and Jill Schatz, and Rob and Carolyn Stoner. Mahalo to these philanthropists for making this outstanding exhibit possible. Well, that's Curtain Call from a Distance for this week. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Paul James Brown. Ahui ho!